Hey, good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon. All right. Hey, just uh, uh, want to check on the roster stuff to start off with, um, you know, the sideline people, Gano and Ridley and uh, Hayden Hurst. Any updates there? And then the injuries from the game, Richie Grant, Fabian Monroe, and Ade Agundadre. Well, well uh, Hayden's, Hayden's back in the building. He'll practice this week, see what it looks like. I've got no other update. Like I told you, as soon as we get an update on, on Ridley, we'll let you know. No update there. Uh, go no. Well, let's see. It'll be, you know, what the doctors say when they when they check in with him. Um, the guys from the game yesterday, uh, again, we'll know more as the week goes on. We, we feel all right. You know, again, we won't know until we get some of those guys out there throughout the week and, and get them some work and see where they're at. And then just coming out of the game, um, uh, the the rotating center situation, are you all going to move forward in that direction? Well, I want to see what the, what the game plan, how it goes, he led. Uh, um, obviously, we went with Matt in the second half. He felt that was best as the game went. Um, it's not an indictment on Drew. Drew's played some decent football when we asked him to. Um, we just needed to, you know, it's a, that's a tough matchup inside and we went with the, the hot hand in the second half, and we'll just continue to evaluate that. And Marvin Davidson's evaluation, he had the big play there, but how's he been coming along for you all? Well, like a lot of our guys, you know, there's stuff he's got to work on week to week, uh, things we can all all do better, but it was nice to see Marlon make a play, um, you know, to have the awareness right there, the, the screen, and it was a big play for us. Michael. Yeah, Arthur, where's, I guess maybe what's changed with Russell Gage over the last three weeks, do you feel like that's led to his production increase? Well, there's several factors, Michael. I mean, a lot of it depends on on the covers that are being played, where the ball goes, where we progress, you know. So, you know, he's, he's had production the last couple of weeks. He may not have been the primary, but he's in the right spot, or he may have been the primary. It just depends on the coverage, well, you know, what we're trying to attack. Uh, so it was good. He was in, you know, a lot of those, he was in a good spot yesterday, in the, depending on the coverage, where it dictated, and, and he made some plays for us. Mike Davis seemed to indicate yesterday after the game that, I guess a couple of weeks ago, you might have lit a fire under the, them to kind of get going in the run game. What what did you maybe point out to them or say to them to I guess, uh, accelerate some of that? Well, you know, I don't want to sit there and say some great speech or some, you know, moment. It, it's a lot, a lot of it is a lot of the work and, you know, it takes time. If you want to, if you want to operate the way we do. And obviously we've had our ebbs and flows. And like I said, I think the last two week, we, last two weeks, we played more what we envisioned and it, and it's, and it is a work in progress. And I think when you're able to do that, we've run the ball decently well the last two weeks. I, I think it's finally just kind of a, he needed to, to pay off for us. So I don't think there's ever some great talk or anything like that. It's just finally you hope to get it, something get us going. And we felt it got us going in Jacksonville. thought we ran the ball pretty decently uh, yesterday. There's always things that we can be better at. So, uh, you know, everybody's perspective is different, Michael. So if Mike took it that way, then good for Mike. We just got to keep improving. And I know I asked a little bit about this yesterday, but I kind of want to follow up again, maybe with the benefit of being able to watch some film. Why do you feel like, in some losses this year, there's been such a struggle to finish drives. Look, um, so you're trying to rephrase what question from yesterday, Michael, just, just so I know what you're trying to ask. I mean, so in, if you look at the differential in touchdowns between wins and losses and red zone touchdowns between wins and losses, it, it's it's staggering in losses. I think it's 14 touchdowns and wins, nine in losses, and kind of more of a 50% touchdown rate in losses. I'm just kind of wondering if if you've seen anything that can kind of give you an indication of maybe why that, that's that been the case. Well, I think well, it's pretty obvious. So, you know, if you get stopped in situational football on third down uh, in the red zone, you know, you had negative plays. I mean, that's usually the, the story in most games. And it's, you know, week to week, depending on the matchups, the, the, the ebbs and flows of the game. Um, you know, we were able to move the ball yesterday. We didn't get down there enough. So that's certainly uh, something, you know, we, we converted third down. But when we got a guy on that fringe area around midfield. We didn't take advantage of it for, for multiple reasons. So there's never just one thing. I think what you're seeing, there's a lot of, a lot of progress being made. 
um, there's no such thing as moral victories. We didn't we didn't do enough things to to win yesterday. And credit to Tampa, that's a good football team. And you know we had our we had our chances and we didn't take advantage of. Them. You'd like to think that this week we understand the importance of this game. I mean, this is this is it. You know, you know nobody's happy to be five and seven, but you're not out of it. And so we have a huge game on Sunday. And we'd like to think that hey, the last two weeks we're starting to trend into the kind of offense more more into the offense where we want to be stylistically and balance. And so uh, this is a big game for us Sunday. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Josh. Arthur, the progress and the improvement that you've talked about that you've seen in the run game, as you're watching the film, where do you see that? Do you see it in an understanding of what th- that they understand what you're trying to accomplish better? Do you see it in better blocking or better te- technical in the technical aspects of the blocking, better physicality? What do you see? Can I, Josh, can I get a cop out and say all of the above? I mean, that's sure. usually what happens. So we're, you know, we definitely feel more in sync, uh, you know, when, especially some of the stuff in the wide zone. Uh, I think you're seeing that some of the stuff pay off. I mean, it's just the one thing, and this is about the game of football. Like, it just takes one thing to be off there, and it could be a difference in a, in a good play and disaster. So I think you're seeing more consistency with everything, with the tracks, with the landmarks. Uh, guys winning gaps and whether we're running wide zone, you know, the outside zone, the tight zone, what people call it inside zone, a lot of different names for it. Uh, you saw some success yesterday on the, the pin pull plays, you know, it depends on what you're trying to attack, but I think we're getting more in sync. Uh, but we, we, we certainly do things better, Josh, but we just got to keep trending in the right direction to give us a chance to win and play well down the stretch. Did Tampa do anything schematically differently after that first drive as it, pertain to the run defense? No, I think, uh, you know, we hit the one, CP got the one on the on the pen pull play, he got out there and, uh, you know, made one guy miss. And, and that's how you say explosives. Matt Hennessy did a nice job on that play. You know, a lot of the times when you get in those explosives, it's a little thing is somebody's second level effort that you may not notice that usually springs a big, big run like that. I thought we were pretty efficient. Um, no, they didn't make any kind of major adjustments there, Josh. Uh, it, it's a good – they got good players. I mean, it's a good scheme. They're going to pressure you. There wasn't anything like, hey, they tell change in the fronts. Right. So. Thanks. Thank you. Tori? Yeah, I actually wanted to go off of Josh's question a little bit more. In what ways – and if you could give me any examples, that would be great too, that you're seeing these guys, particularly these this offensive line – really understanding the concepts of what you're trying to put in in the run game. I just think it's a it's just a, a long it's a long hard um, road if you want to do it right and so these guys we got guys that I mean, most teams do but we, we got guys that work extremely hard um, especially up front the way they bring it every day they come to work and I, so I just think as you're seeing a lot of a lot of hard work pay off and us getting uh, getting on the same page. Well, sometimes you'd like it to happen right away. Uh, obviously, it didn't. But that's why you don't give up on it, because you've seen it work before. You know, certainly there's things we've tried to tweak maybe here or there. I'm not going to get too much in the details of the scheme, but I think it's in that payoff. Now, the, the trick is week over week to do it consistently. To do it for two weeks, great. But, it, you know, we need to do it another week and, and improve from there. And I know kind of a phrase that pops up, whether it's with you or, or with players over the course of the last probably couple of weeks, has been the need to play a complete game and wanting to see that come to fruition. And I was just kind of curious from your perspective, like what that looks like. If you could give me like a, a all-encompassing 5,000-foot view of what a complete game looks like for you and what that goal looks like for you. Sure. It's it's obviously when, when the situational matchups I think that's what you're going to see a lot of times in the NFL. You know, the way, the way you finish the end of half in the games usually a pretty good indicator. Um, so that that would be that would be the first thing, and the other thing would be, you know, leading in the special teams. Can you win the field position battle? Can, can you if they move the ball, which inevitably the teams are going to move the ball? Can you make them kick field goals in the red zone? And and clearly, and these are stating the obvious, but that that that's what it is. I mean, can you play complementary? Can you win the field position? Can you? Not turn it over, self-inflicted wounds. You got to get down there and score. So that's what it's for. I mean, we we've had it in, in spot. You know, when you want to be a great team, that's when you're really clicking on all three phases. Thank you, mm-hmm. Zach. 
Hey, Coach, good seeing you. Um, in your experience in the league, when you're preparing for opponent, have has anybody ever fired their uh, one of their coordinators the week of that game? Um, you know, with Carolina making the move um, and having played them already, are you expecting anything different as they change philosophies offensively? Well, I certainly um, – I can't off the top of my head, Zach, think about the coordinators. Um, I, I know definitely the head coaches. I mean, I think – I think we were the first game when Miami made the move to, to Dan Campbell. Um, we were the team went down there in 2016 because I remember it well because it knocked us out of the playoffs when Doug Marone took over in Jacksonville. Uh, so I've been a part of that, but uh, I can't off the top of my head. I, it's probably happened, Zach. I just can't remember. But, uh, you know, the, like I said, it'll be a tough divisional game no matter what what's going on over there and kind of worry about ourselves. We understand who they've got. It's not all of a sudden overnight you're going to see some completely new offense or anything like that. So we've got to be ready to go. I mean, we, we didn't do a good enough job talking about finishing drives in Carolina and situational football, which, which cost us a game. Thank you. Thank you. Follow up, Steve. Ed. Yeah, Coach Long, uh, those same lines. Uh, Coach Nixon, I guess, was his OC at Baylor. Do you go back? Does somebody have to go back and look at that stuff to see if it's any trends to pick up for for this upcoming game? We'll look at everything, D-Led. Like I said, it's in the middle of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's you know, both teams have the players they have. I, I doubt you're going to see some magical, uh, you know, completely different scheme. I mean, I I, I just got to be prepared for D-Led. We'll do our homework, but. In my experience, to Zach's question, maybe you get a bump in, in a little bit of, uh, I don't know what you call it, urgency. I don't know. Every team's different. But, I, you know, we know this. I and mean, the last time they came here, they ran the football on us. Obviously, they got Cam in there. He can, he provides another weapon to run the football. And we'll see what their game plan is. We'll see it early. But we got to be ready to go. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Michael, did you have one? I did. Uh, I want to go back to the complete game thing. Have you as a coach ever been a part of a complete game or is this something that yeah. you know, coaches always talk about and sure. it's kind of this aspirational thing that never quite gets there? Yeah, I think, you know, you've covered this game a long time and I think you think you can see, I've said this before, sometimes you play, you win, you really don't play well. Uh, but certainly, yes, Michael, that, that's not it's not some uh, fantastical idea. So, uh, to use uh, one of your terms, so uh, or a term I think you would use. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was just wondering. Because some some coaches will use that in kind of that broad term that's like never quite gets there. I just you know if you viewed it like that, or if it was more of a realistic type of situation for you. Well, I'm not using a line from Friday Night Lights. You're talking about like the perfect game, right? Billy really Bob Thornton does that, and that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. No problem. Josh, anything? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Tori? Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.